It's me, the Vegas Reptable, from the ground up, part 10, the big homie, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> I believe last time we left off, I was talking about the rise of the Northtown Gangster Crips, which started off as 7-4 Hoovers. Now check this out. Remember I told you, we, we, we basically gave the K-9s an ultimatum. Either you're going to be with the 60s or you're going to be with us. Now, what took place, this all happened in 1988. This is, this is not a figment of my imagination. I was there. What happened was when the, when the K-9s burnt their blue rags, their leader, J-Rock, James Lee, he was in the penitentiary. He went to the joint. He ended up turning back 6-0. So the 60s, they were on West Street. They still was in Crip City. The Donnas was coming through that, tan it up. I mean, coming through that, tan it up. Hot Rod, Blue Zone, Foo Foo, Dread Mac, uh, uh, Ant Dog, Antique, Tater Chips, Lace Dog, Casio, Gangsta Lump. All them dudes was coming through that, tan it up. Firecracker, all of them. They was tan it up. And it was a lot of money in carry arms. So the 60s, was, 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 you know, we was getting at them too, but we was still focused more on the West Coast Bloods for what happened to our homeboy L. Because our homie just got killed at the end of 86, and they homeboy got killed in 88. So it was a fresh wound to us, just like it was a fresh wound to them. So we still was focused on the West Coast Bloods, and we was giving the 60s the business too, you know, because the Donners at that time was the homies. So it was us and the Donners against the 60s, and the West Coast Bloods, but in carry arms, because of the crack trade, it was starting to boom over there, it was a lot of money, and if you rolled up the street on Morton, right there on the wall, well, my homeboy Lil Gus, Anthony Lucius used to stay, stay it said, City of Dope, because it was so much money coming through there, it was money on Morton, and it was money on West Street, now, what happened on, 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 on in carry arms, was, see, one of the mouthpieces or the faces of the rolling 60s, they didn't have no specific leader. You had people like Big Jed, Torture Chamber, Dr. Mac, you know what I'm saying, uh, Sticker Bush, Tory Hyman, Captain C, which became Mook, uh, 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 Slowpoke, uh, Big Looney, uh, uh, Boy Pop, uh, Money Mun, House, uh, uh, J Lord, his brother Ronnie Yo, uh, you know, uh, uh, Chucko and all them dudes, you know, you had, yeah, you had a, you had a few 60s, drunk, blue, you know, uh, a few, you know what I'm saying, you had a nice, they had a nice uh, car at that time, you know what I'm saying, so, <clears throat> one of their faces, though, was a guy by the name of Easy e Eric Eccles, he wasn't really a gunfighter, he was more of this big athletic dude with a jerry curl, had a lot of money, and he was into drug dealing, and he basically will fight you before he shoot you, you know. And that's pretty much how the '60s was. You had a few that uh, that shoot you, like Spike and all them. But you know, like Romeo and all the other ones, Big Alexis and all them, they get down with you. The '60s rather get down because they was always outnumbered. It was more Donnas, it was more Gersons, it was basically, you know, more they enemy. It was more of us. So <clears throat> he he came up with this idea because we was going back and forth from Morton shooting at the '60s. And the 60s was coming from West shooting at us. So he came up with the, you know, with the idea, man, let's, let's get down. You know, they looked at the K-9s as busters anyway, like watered-down 60s that turned Gersons. So they was like, let's get down for carry arms. We can, we can fight. And everybody remember that fight we had in, that, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the back of that uh, security office in that big parking lot facing West Street. Y'all remember that fight we had back there with the rolling 60s? over carry arms, they thought they was going to get down with the K-9s and the Gershons that happened to have been over there because the Gershons that moved in K-9 at Hood was Anthony Lucius and Donna Ray Page. Donna Ray Page and Anthony Lucius was right there on Morton and had it sold up. Richie Rich stayed in the same complex that Donna Ray Page stayed in. Kippy, all them. And right Across the way was Anthony Lucius, Lil Gus. So we was already over there, and the 60s thought they was just going to fight those guys over there. No, 
the whole Gershon was going to come, and the whole Gershon came. And what ended up happening is when the 60s came, because I'm going to keep it real, they didn't run. They came. It was about 80 of them. They came, but they thought they was going to get down with the K-9s. But they didn't know it was like 400 dudes coming from that desert across the way. And we came through, crossed over Cary, came into the arms. And we basically, because the, the 60s was in the parking lot and the K-9s was coming from the park area. And they was walking toward the 60s. And all of a sudden, the 60s heard sounds and noises behind them. So they turned around, and it was a bunch of dudes. We had sticks, bottles, chains, bats. You know you can't trust us. That's why we got the name Dirty Herbert Gerson. It was supposed to be a fist fight. We didn't bring no pistols, but we found everything we can pick up in the desert, and we bought it. And they and, and, and let's just say this here. It was like, y'all remember that movie, The Outsiders? It was like that. The 60s fought, but they was overwhelmed. And the fight lasted for about... 15 seconds but they was overwhelmed and then you start hearing people like man he got a rock oh they cheating they got balls and stuff like that you know what I'm saying and I'm gonna just keep it real the 60s baby they ran cause it was one big old dude saying y'all bet not run y'all bet not run some big old dude you know what I mean I think that was torture chain we bet not run you bet not run but it was too many of us we overwhelmed them now watch this <clears throat> and I dare anybody to prove me wrong now, when the when the when the when we when we took over Kerry Arms, and the Donna Streets was at the '60s, we took a hood that they was used to having. Now they was just confined to Crip City, so the Donnas was able to go over there and really focus on them and work them. The '60s ended up migrating from Crip City to Sydney Sioux. They took over Sydney Sioux area, Sydney Sioux. Used to be Sydney Sue GQs, but the 60s took it over. As a matter of fact, one of the head Sydney Sue GQs was a guy by the name of Pony Boy. Pony Boy used to be with Tangy, Baby Huey, and all them. They were Sydney Sue, G uh, Sydney Sue GQs. But Pony Boy ended up becoming a rolling 60. And he adopted a new name. And it became and Pony Boy became Mad Meach from Rolling Sixties. The sixties was in Sydney Soup. They took over the suit. And then when I come back, I'm gonna tell you how the sixties migrated from there because the Donalds was really giving them the business. The sixties didn't have the guns like that, I'm not lying. They didn't. They didn't have the numbers at this time, and they didn't have the gun, the gun, the gun, the gunfire at the time to stand up against us in the Gerson. The 60s ended up clicking up with the coast because of family ties over there. Money Mun, sister, Nisha, had a baby by West Coast Blood, Roro. Pac-Man and Money Mun is cousins. Pac-Man, Perry Day is from West Coast Bloods. So they had ties over there. I'm going to get into that. But I'm going to also get into how the 60s migrated from Crip City to Sydney Sioux to Princeton. And they clashed with the NTGs, which was 7-4 Hoovers at the time. See, an incident took place. I ain't want to get into it, but I guess I can. I ain't got nothing but time. I was about 13 years old, and it was me, my homeboy, Danny McCoy, and Tyrone Howe. We was together in Danny McCoy, uh, girlfriend Tammy, red Toyota truck. And we went up to Stop and Shop, which is a, a a store where, you know, we go up there. Every gang go up there. They call it Stop and Shop, Stop and Get Pop, Stop and Get Drop, Stop and Get Mop, Stop with the Glock. It's, it's, it's Stop and Shop was just a cold area. Anybody, you go up there, you live to run into anybody, man. You, you rolling the dice when you used to go up there. And it was owned by an Italian guy named Stewart. Stewart used to hold our guns. People didn't even know that. That's why if you was a real Gerson, you was never slipping at, at Stop and Shop. And, the, and that night, the NTGs or the 7-4 Hoovers, they found that out. Because when we pulled up, they was already there. And Junior, this the first time I really met this cat. I thought he was from Donna because he had on a Dodgers jersey. And that's what they were wearing when they first came out, Dodgers jerseys. And, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking that he was from Donna. He was sitting outside his car in the, in, the, in the front seat, 
And, you know, I was looking at him because I wanted to embrace him like, what's up, homie? But while I was looking at him, I could see that there was, it was kind of like tension. And all of a sudden, he looked at me and said, what you looking at, cuz? And I'm like, I'm looking at you, nigga. And he was like, nigga, well, what's up? And, and, my, and my homeboy, Danny McCoy, was like, hey, shit. And he, like, shook his head. So I'm like, ain't them niggas from, ain't they from Donna? So I'm, like, looking confused. So Dan going in the store. I don't know what's going on. All of a sudden, it's dudes getting out the car that he was sitting in. I'm like, oh, shit. And Dan went up in the store. So I'm like, whoa. And these dudes, they was older than me. I was, like, 13 at the time. You know, I was really young in this. And so these dudes got the car. I'm like, oh, shit, man. They finna smash me, man. So when Dan came out, him and Junior, j Rat. They instantly, you know, that's who was sitting outside the car. They instantly look at each other. They draw down on each other. I don't know what the hell DMC, Danny McCoy get this gun at, but it's wrapped up in a paper bag. So I'm like, where the fuck he get that from? So they got a guns pointed at each other. And the boy Junior, uh, j Rat, he pu pu pulled his gun on Dan. He said, Hoover Crip. And Danny McCoy pulled his. And he was like, nigga, this Gershon Park. And they had the gat pointed at each, other, at each other. And they was like, you know, like, I don't know, I was like, wow, man, I hope don't nobody let go, man, because it's going to be ugly. It was two big pistols. I don't know what Dan had because it was in a paper bag, but it was chunky. And Junior had, like, something look like a faux faux. So they had both of these guys at each other, and everybody squinting like, man, y'all chill, y'all chill, hoping don't nobody shoot. And his homeboys, Junior, they was like, hey, cuz, hey, man, chill out, man. Y'all, y'all, come on, y'all chill out. Because Stewart, the store, the store owner, he came and he opened up the store. He opened up his door, and he had a gauge, like he. But he was halfway in the store and halfway out the store, looking like if he go down, he go he go let go too. So I guess Junior was like, you know, his homeboys peeped and he was like, hey, cuz, let's go, man, fuck that shit, let's go, man, y'all chill. And my homie Danny McCoy was like, nigga, you better chill, nigga, you better chill. And he was like, all right, we go catch each other, cuz. I'm gonna catch you, cuz. He was like, nigga, whatever, nigga. He was like, nigga, I'm gonna catch you. He was like, all right, nigga, whatever, nigga. But you better chill. So he put his gun down. Dan kept his gun on him like, nigga, you better go on. So he was like, I'm going to catch you, cuz. And I'm like, Dan, I was like, why you didn't pop him right then and there? You should have smoked him right there. I'm like, I ain't going to lie. That's what my mind was back then. Nigga, knock him down. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, he ended up getting in the car. They drove off, right? My naive ass thinking everything over. We got to go. Dan ran over there, gave a pistol to Stuart. Stuart went back up in the store. But Dan wasn't coming back to the truck fast. I'm sitting up in the back in the, in the bed. I'm like, let's go. Because when they left, they drove up into Burgundy Square, which is a, a neighborhood just right up the street. It's on Inglestead. That's the side street that uh, Stop and Shop set on. It was a street called Inglestead. And Inglestead goes from Valley View, which is where Stop and Shop sits on, into Burgundy Square. Okay? And the car, when it pulled off, it pulled off. It crossed Inglestead. It crossed over to Lake Mead, and it went up. You know, kept going up Inglestead because Lake Mead crossed Inglestead. So it went up in the Inglestead, right? And the brake lights came on. They had a sunroof. And I'm sitting in the back of the bed. And all of a sudden, Junior came out the sunroof. And Dan was like, get cheap out the truck. And Tom House snatched me by my, like, he had my, my collar and my curl in his hand. And he pulled me out the car. And that boy started busting. Boom, 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 boom. And you can, you can hear the bullets ricocheting in the back of the bed of the truck and one of them went through the back windshield the front windshield and the window a stopping shop now dig this the bullet hole that went through the back window shield was exactly where my head was and I was a 13 year old boy if my homeboy wouldn't have snatched me out that car I'd have been splattered all over that I wouldn't have had no head I was 13 when that happened but that was the first incident between us and the NTGs that, uh, that, that, that involved someone almost really getting killed. Now, but I didn't know that was in retaliation. Because I told y'all, they jumped seaweed behind a female. I said that most gang wars are started behind a female. And I told y'all, when Kareem and Junior jumped my homeboy seaweed behind a female, well, come to find out, Seaweed, and I ain't going to say him, but Junior, the boy from NTG, the, the one that jumped Seaweed, his Cadillac got shot up 
on, on Martin Luther King, on, on Lake Mead, got lit up. And when he seen Danny McCoy, that's what led to that incident right there. And me almost getting killed. Now, when I come back, I'm going to tell you how we start getting at the West Coast Bloods and the Parus come into play. Until then, from the ground up, stay tuned.